So the Ministry of Health has confirmed a COVID-positive traveller from Sydney visited Wellington in the last week. How high is the risk of infection into the city? And this person, it has been confirmed, was a visitor to Wellington in a tourist capacity. They didn't come here and lock themselves in the room for two days. They went out and about, I think. Uh, joining us now is Director General of Health, uh, Ashley Bloomfield. Uh, Dr Bloomfield, good to have you on the programme. Just confirming, uh, what do we know about this person who visited? Yeah, kia ora, good morning. So uh, this person uh, flew into Wellington uh, just after midnight, early Saturday morning, spent the, uh, the weekend here in Wellington and then flew out sort of early Monday morning back to Sydney. Became symptomatic on that Monday and uh, it was tested uh, late Monday afternoon and the result came back late yesterday afternoon or actually early evening and our Australian counterparts let us know straight away. So if we look at sort of the pattern of uh, those couple of days and what we call the CT value of the test results suggests uh, almost certainly they were infectious before they left Sydney, came here and so we're assuming they were infectious uh, for the period they were in Wellington. So we're just in the process now of, of finalising the places of interest, the, the, the places this person visited and we'll make those public as quickly as possible uh, with a request for people who were there at the times uh, of interest to isolate and be tested and wait for a result before they uh, they sort of uh, come out of isolation. You, if you flick those to us as soon as possible, we'll have them up um, you know, within seconds. So you just, you just let us know and we'll go public with those locations yeah, anything we can do to help. But yeah. um, firstly, this, this person, how are you, are, you, are you infectious in the early stage or are you highly infectious in the early stages of... Is, it is a Delta. Is it a confirmed Delta variant? Yeah. We haven't got any confirmation yet of what variant it is or indeed exactly uh, where the person may have caught it. We're assuming if we look at the pattern that they were infected in Sydney before they came here. Um, but what we don't have is any information about how they might be linked to the existing uh, outbreak there is in Sydney uh, and or um, you know what their symptoms were when they travelled. As far as I'm aware, they, were, they didn't become symptomatic until Monday. But we do know people can be infectious even while pre-symptomatic. The other thing we don't know is whether or not this person was vaccinated and what we have seen is that people who are vaccinated who get infected are less likely to transmit the virus on so that will be material as well. Yeah, so many so many questions still unanswered. Um, what were their movements like? You'll, you'll have an idea now of where they went and that sort of thing. Now you won't confirm obviously until you confirm but let's put it this way. How can we say this um, Dr Bloomfield? Were they active over the weekend? Did they get around the place? Yeah, look, the, this person, it seems, came to Wellington as a tourist and they, they knew people here and that those are the people who are their close contacts, but they, they were out visiting a number of venues. The weather wasn't that flash in Wellington over the weekend, uh, so, um, uh, you know, probably a lot of time inside. Uh, we w we're just confirming up the times and, uh, you know, the relevant times and venues, and we will make that information available as quickly as possible so people can take action. Whether it's the Delta variant or any other variant, the action is the same, and that is is that we need people to isolate, get tested, and remain isolated till they've got a negative test result. Okay. So you will know, and you're just confirming these these locations now. But you will know, and the times and so forth. But you will know largely the places of interest. Why can't you tell us some of them now? Because the sooner the better, and it gets the information out there around the country. Yeah, look, I am not the person uh, uh, who spoke with um, the case. It was uh, our team at Regional Public Health spoke to him late last evening and uh, this morning I've, I've messaged our team and said let's get those places of interest firmed up and the times um, and get those out as soon as possible. So we're, we're aiming to get those out within the next hour. Are we, are we talking about places where there would have been other, you know, lots of Wellingtonians or lots of other people within these precincts? Well, you can imagine the sorts of places that um, people come to, uh, the tourist destinations people come to in Wellington, that's a fantastic place to visit. Uh, places like Te Papa, um, I would imagine you've got um, the Weta Workshop, these sorts of places. But uh, more, probably more important, um, and we want to be really clear about, are the places that, um, that this person ate and drank at, any bars, clubs, restaurants, because it's those confined spaces where we know the risk is higher. So we, we'll make sure we're getting all that information and getting it out there as quickly as possible. Yes, and you mentioned to tip up there as well, so we look forward to uh, this and getting it, getting it out there. Um, <clears throat> what happens now? Because you said that um, in the release, the Minister's release last night said um, that it was largely a low risk to, to New Zealand with closing the Trans-Tasman bubble, but that was before we knew all the flight details and so forth. Do you consider this a low risk? 
Well, uh, in interestingly, we had made the decision to pause uh, the travel bubble with New South Wales for 72 hours before we found out about this case. We were concerned, just there were a couple of the new cases in Sydney, um, in particular one, a nine-year-old um, primary school student from a school near to this Bondi Junction Westfield that just uh, was a bit unexplained. And so that was quite a key factor in our advice to the Minister to actually put the pause on the travel bubble. We had done that before we found out about this case. We still think it's low risk. The total number of cases uh, in Sydney is small. But as we've seen from this case, it only needs uh, one to have travelled here to New Zealand um, for us to need to put a, a response into action. So um, on balance, of, it, it was the right uh, advice to, uh, to put the pause in place, and now we're acting quickly to, to do the contact tracing associated with this case. Are you nervous about what this might show? Because, as we said, low risk before we knew all the details. Is it low risk? I'm trying to find out. Is it, are we in a low risk situation now, or are we in a very high or medium risk? Look, the, the, we felt the risk in New South Wales and Sydney is still a low risk. In terms of the case we've had here, I'm confident in our contact tracing and our systems here, and I'm also confident that people will respond um, to the request to isolate and be tested. That's uh, uh, what will work for us is to act quickly, and so I'm confident we can get around it. How many of the passengers have been contacted so far? Well, uh, Air New Zealand and Qantas uh, flights, there was actually a Qantas flight from Sydney yes. to Wellington and an Air New Zealand flight back from Wellington to Sydney. So that return flight to Sydney is our Australian colleagues will be contacting those folk um, and then uh, the, both airlines, they will be reaching out to those passengers. Of course, the flight numbers and times have already gone out there. So I imagine people will be waking up, be, be made aware and they'll be calling Healthline to get advice. Right. Okay. So it's very, very early days, isn't it? How many people on the flight into Wellington do we know? No, I don't know the numbers, but we'll we'll have the names uh, and contact details of those people in, with our contact tracing team here as well at the ministry, and they'll be reaching out directly to them. Compulsory masks in Wellington. Do you think that there should be masks worn in Wellington from today? Well, look, just a reminder to everybody, actually right around the motu, uh, you are required to wear a mask in public transport and on domestic flights. Here's a very good reason as to why we have that in place. Uh, imperative to keep using the app to keep a track of your records. We'll be looking at what else might be needed around Wellington, whether we need to increase mask use or put in place any uh, gathering size uh, restrictions on gathering size, but uh, that information will come, become available. We've got a stand up at one o'clock today, so we'll get a full update then. Is, is, it, is it on the cards that the alert level could go up in Wellington? We haven't considered that yet, but of course um, what we've shown is that we, we need all options on the table to be successful in, in heading off this virus. Let's, um, let's get this sorted out. Um, I appreciate your time on the programme this morning. Let us know those locations of interest as well and we'll get them out there.